Red Magic is back now with the 6S. We have an upgraded model. This one still has the fan in it, and I've got the transparent edition, so you can look in and see that little now RGB fan working away at its 2000 RPM. So this model that I've got has 16 gigabytes of RAM. That's a huge amount. Powered by the Snapdragon 888 Plus, I have 256 gigabytes of UFS 3.1 storage with this particular model. Sadly, no upgrades in the camera department, which is really overdue here. So eight megapixel front facing camera. On the rear, we've got a 64 megapixel main camera, eight megapixel ultra wide. And in this in-depth review, I'll be going over this phone in detail to tell you exactly how it performs and what you can expect out of the 165 Hertz AMOLED screen that this has and the general performance. But a bit of a spoiler here, it is the fastest phone that I have reviewed here in the channel. So inside the box, we've got a warranty card. There is a quick start guide. We have a case, which is a TPU one that does have a cutout on the whole back of it. So you can still enjoy the transparent back that I have with this model. Type-C to Type-C cable and the charger that they give us, this one is 30 watts and it takes just under one hour, but I'll give you the exact time in this in-depth review. There is also a SIM tray tool. So this phone is very similar to the other models that I've reviewed here in the channel. In-screen fingerprint reader location is okay. I wish it was a little bit higher, but it is very quick and accurate to unlock. Now this is a heavy phone, okay? It does weigh about 216 grams, putting it, yes, on the heavy side there. So this one has the, obviously the transparent back on here. And I do like it because we can see the tiny little cooling fan inside there. So with our cameras here, we have the same setup as before. This is one area that I do believe that they should have changed this. They should have given us maybe some new cameras. So we have an eight megapixel ultra wide, two megapixel camera for depth and that same 64 megapixel sensor. So you can just see in here that it's advertising that 165 screen refresh rate, hertz screen refresh rate, which is very, very quick, of course. So here we have an intake vent for the fan that's on the side and our volume up and down button. This is our game mode switch here, so you can switch it into the gaming mode. Antenna line, so it's a metal frame around the outside and it's 215 grams. The thickness is 9.5 millimeters, so it is a little bit of a chunky, heavy phone, considering the fact that it does have some a vapor cooling chamber in there as well too. It's kind of normal that it is heavy. The battery capacity is 5,050 milliamp hours. And again, that's going to add to the weight. So right here on this side, you can see we've got the exit vent. And if you put your hand up to there, your finger there, you can actually feel a little bit of air coming out when that fan's on, which we'll get more onto soon. So right here, we've got a power button, microphone, and then the triggers, the gaming triggers here at the top that you can customize. I'll cover that later on in this video. And the screen too. And just to show you again that the bezels on it, they're not too bad. And at least we don't have a notch or a cutout with this one. So this front facing camera is eight megapixels. We have secondary speaker right here. So it does have stereo loudspeakers. They're very, very loud on this phone. Now the microphone right here, this is our speaker. You can see an antenna line and the SIM tray. So this one, I'll just quickly pull it out for you. It does have a seal around it, rubber gasket, metal frame, and it takes two nano sims. So one on that side and then one here on the other. And right up the top here, this is one of the greatest things to have on a gaming phone, especially 2021 with so many brands just completely forgetting about it, is a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. The quality out of this one, it's actually not too bad. It is very loud. You can see another antenna line and a microphone there. So three mics in total with this phone. So this phone has a fan that you can toggle on and off manually. In most games, it will turn on. You can also go here from the toggles, decide to turn it off. Now there are two options. You can see with this widget, so you can either turn it off manually, you can have it into the full power mode, which is just 100% maximum RPM there, which is 2000 RPM by the way, or in the smart mode. And just flipping it over, take a look at this. I think it actually does look really quite cool. I like this RGB glow in there and the fact that you can look in and see those internals and see that tiny little fan spinning away there currently at 2000 RPM. 
So this panel here, 165 hertz maximum, super smooth. Touch response is 720 hertz, so it is very responsive to touch. Even though there it's stating green colors, this of course is black, and the blacks do look very, very deep. It is a good display. I like the size of it, 6.8 inches. The fact that it's flat, there's no curvature to it at all, and the brightness is really good. This one tops out at over 800 nits, so you can see it in direct sunlight. If you enable this, which is the low brightness flash protection, reduce damage to your eyes, reducing the flicker. So really that is a DC dimming, but they just haven't named it like that. So you can see when I turn it off, have a look what happens. See the banding comes back, that flicker. Now you can't see any of this in person, but onto the ROM performance. So we have with this one there, Red Magic OS 4. It's based on Android 11. And the performance is very good. This is a really, really quick phone. As you expect, I've got a whopping 16 gigabytes of RAM with this, uh, 512 gigabytes of UFS 3.1 storage. So there's no way this thing just wants to slow down at all. There's a couple of complaints though that I do have with this particular ROM, and it's nothing to do with the performance. So we can't set our own launcher with this. They're still doing this uh, Nubia, unfortunately. So you can run Apex Launcher or Nova Launcher. I've got Nova here, and you'll see that it'll launch it. It's fine and you've got all your apps and everything will be working, but as soon as you trigger gesture like now, it's gonna go back to the default launcher. You can't actually set or override this launcher. There are a couple of things, like when you turn on the game space, or you go into a game, there's some text that comes up in Chinese. The translation isn't quite there. The OS itself is a little limited, but the performance is very, very good. And the haptics on this phone aren't too bad either. I do like that. So when you first get this phone, it does have approximately 240 gigabytes free. Remember, there's no expandable storage, no micro SD card support. And I am on the latest. This is the latest firmware here. So this is version 4.08. And it seems to be relatively bug free so far. I know with some of the earlier models I've tested from them, the firmwares were not quite as stable as this one here. So Widevine level one, sir, Netflix is running in full HD. Okay, that is good, but Amazon Prime Video is in standard definition. Why? Well, Amazon has not whitelist, whitelisted this device ID yet, and that's why. You can see we've got HDR10, HDR10 Plus support, camera API 2, level 3 support here. That's good. Now, the storage, this one is UFS 3.1, so take a look at these random read and writes here. They are really good, phenomenal speeds here, and almost... 2,000 megabytes per second with the sequential read. So there is no bottlenecks when it comes to storage at all on this particular model. So we've got a, a good Geekbench 5 score here for an Android phone for the Snapdragon 888 Plus. And here we do have just the best score ever that I have seen here from a Android phone. This is just amazing. This score here for Antutu version 9. Wow, 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 wow. So 865,000 points. That's the new champion. That is the best I have seen yet. Wildlife stress test. So this is the stress test that goes for 20 loops and it can tell us if it has throttled at all because the first score, the best score, and then the lowest score calculate the difference, which is our stability. So we can see that, oh, hang on. Yes, it did throttle down in performance. 8.5%. Now the little fan was working on this. The Snapdragon 888 Plus and even the 888 are very hot chipsets. Wi-Fi performance, excellent, very good. Now down on my lower spot, which is downstairs away from my Wi-Fi 6 router, an excellent result here getting over 300 megabits per second. That's very quick. Top speeds will max out at 715, not the fastest I've seen with this router, but still very, very good there. Accuracy is three meters with our GPS, and it does see a lot of satellites in view with its dual carrier frequency support, as you can see here with the level five, the level ones right there, and the E5A2. So you can see it gets a lot of satellites. Now my battery benchmark test that I always run on these phones and the tablets too that I review would not complete for some reason. This is the second time it crashed on me and I've just lost two days testing and it's, I've just given up here, okay? So it just keeps happening. An unknown error occurred, and Tutu also crashed on me. So the ROM, I wouldn't quite say is 100% stable at the moment. Hopefully firmware updates will correct that. So stuck on uh, 90 hertz, I managed to get 10 hours on screen on time. 
So realistically, at 90 hertz here, you're looking at a very good battery life. 120 hertz, it's going to really chop it down to about seven hours, realistically, of screen on time. And 165 hertz, you are then looking at around five and a half, six hours. It really does burn through the battery. And if you're gaming, gaming time, uh, about two and a half to three hours only. So it really rips through that battery, this powerful phone, when you're gaming. But at least it does charge really quick here. You can see, well, it's not bad at all. 52 minutes to go from 12% to 100. This is only 30 watt charging. So still good. Very good here for a 5,050 milliamp hour battery. How was the audio now on this phone? So I've placed a few voice calls. They sound good to me. No problems at all. And as I mentioned before, when we looked at that 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, very loud out of it, just like the speakers. So these speakers, super loud. There's the one at the top, one down below. And I'll give you a sample now at 100%. This is one of the louder phones out there that you can find. And I think this is perfect for a gaming phone to have powerful, loud dual speakers on it. Now into what this phone is really about, that's the gaming performance, which is the best yet I have tested in an Android phone. So that is the game space here that they call it, that you just flick that switch, you go into the exclusive gaming hub. So first up, I will launch here PUBG, and we'll take a look at the performance of that. So you can see that's the little bit of Chinese we do get with this gaming mode. There is our FPS counter, and if you swipe here from the side, you can bring up the performance options. So there's a few things we can see here. You've got the balanced, Rice, <laughs> the translation's gone wrong. Beyond and infinite modes there. There's a few do not disturb features there. Screen capture, adjusting the screen refresh rate on the go there too as well is all possible with that. There's a lot of different features there. So I'm using the top performance mode here. And just to point out that with PUBG, that under settings, that we can run with the graphics, the highest frames per second mode here is the 90 FPS, that's only on smooth. So on balanced, it's extreme. And you put the smooth on, it's only 90 frames per second. So let's test out and see how that performs. And just while we're getting into the game here too, I'll show you the touch controls here that you can configure that. So that's the two shoulder buttons at the top, which are very good to have with a game like this one here. So all you're basically doing is just moving over this little widget, which is emulating touch, okay? And you get the haptic vibration, you can turn it on for that. So as soon as I push, say, the right trigger here, you can see that is where it's going to press, and that should be my shot fire, and that one looking down the sights, which is what I normally configure it here for a game like PUBG. Now with the triggers, it is very easy. So I just tap the left one and I can look down the sights and then fire here with the right. Now there is a third touch button, which is on the back here. You can touch that one and assign that to a different control if you wanted to do so. Not very hard to do. Now the performance with this game has just been the whole time a constant 90 frames per second. How do I know? Well, it's the counter right there. It's always around that 90, 88, 92, but pretty much a 90 average the whole entire time. So it does feel really smooth, plays really well here, super fast. I've got no kills yet. My teammates keep taking the kills, but actually, here we go. We've got someone shooting at me or someone. Okay, they've gone, they've disappeared. But let's take a look at a game now that's even more demanding here than PUBG, and that is Genshin Impact. So this game is super tough. Now I've got it on the highest possible settings and I have set it to 60 frames per second and we are normally around that 60 frames per second but there are a few little dips. You can see it's getting down now to about 55. But remember this game is really the most demanding mobile game out there at the time of this video at least. Now I'll just attack a few enemies here. You see a few frame dips. You can see now down to 43 there and that is pretty normal there when it first caches in the sounds, the graphics and whatnot. I have noticed that. And when you get into new areas, you will see that occasional, a little bit of a frame, a dip, some lag. And I'm not playing very well here. He's getting the better of me. So good performance. This is the best I have seen this game run on an Android device. Really, really good. And what about those thermals though? How hot is it gonna get? Because the Snapdragon 888 series, very, very hot chips. Let's check this out now. So what I'll do is I'm going to play now for an hour and report back on our thermals. 
All right, let's have a look here. So it is getting quite toasty, very, very warm at the moment. So we are looking at the front of the screen up to almost 50 degrees Celsius right there. And what about the back? So you can see the hot point actually around where the cameras are and a little cooler where the fan's blowing some of that hot air out. So almost 52 degrees now, 53 really, after playing for one hour. And you can even see where that hot air is being pushed out from the fan, which is just around this area. So that frame is getting quite warm. So this is really only about a two degrees maybe cooler than what I've seen some passively cooled phones. However, the performance is right up there. It's maintaining a much higher frame rate, throttling a lot less than other phones that are passively cooled, but it still is throttling a little bit and still getting very, very warm to the touch. Moving over to our video quality now and the camera. So with the front facing camera, eight megapixel, we can shoot as you can see right now, 1080p. Now this does not have any electronic image stabilization. The audio quality is also poor. And, well, it's disappointing. I think they should have done more. I know the focus of this phone is not really the cameras at all. It's all about the gaming performance. Still, for a flagship, it should be better than this. So let's have a look now at the rear camera. Sample of our video quality. So you can shoot 8K 30 frames per second. And you can also shoot 4K 30 and 60. It has electronic image stabilization. And the video quality I find to be, it's okay, but I do notice you get quite a bit of panning judder. I mean, it's not the best out here. They're still using that same 64 megapixel sensor. So just testing the stability here. Walk down through my little jungle. And the quality for 4K, it's just that. I think it's, it's, it's really average. I have definitely seen better out of flagship phones. I think it's a little disappointing here. So I wouldn't really be buying this phone for the cameras for the video performance. It would be, of course, for the gaming performance, what it is really aimed at anyway. Alright, so as you can see from the camera performance, low light, wow, it definitely needs a lot of work. So they've used the same series of cameras now for the last three or maybe even four of these releases here from them. And I think it's time for an upgrade, the selfie camera especially, I mean for video performance, no electronic image stabilization, poor quality audio. Really, you would not be getting this at all for the cameras. I mean the main camera is okay, don't get me wrong, the main camera can take a very good photo. It's just the rest of the cameras, the ultra wide, the front, and then the video performance. Yeah, a true letdown with this. The other con here is the software. And I mentioned this before in my other video. So there's a few things with this that, uh, yeah, aren't quite there yet. There's a, a few translations that are still not pulling through in English. It's still in Chinese. And you can't set or overwrite the default launcher. If you didn't want to use the Red Magic OS, you wanted to, to set, for example, Nova Launcher, sadly, once you do any of the gestures or go back to home or anything, it will then revert back to the launchers I showed you. So you can't override that, which is a bit of a nonsense. Apart from that, I mean, if your focus is to have the absolute best gaming performance you can get out of an Android phone here, then this is it. This is so quick. That Antutu score is the fastest I've seen yet. And then the performance we're playing, a demanding game like Genshin Impact, it is very, very good. Maintains a much higher average frame rate than other Snapdragon 888 phones, which still tend to get quite hot. This does get hot. 
As I showed you, it will still hit 52 degrees, uh, and that's happening on the other Snapdragon 888 phones. However, because of the little fan that is in there, you can feel it pushing out that hot air, it's maintaining a higher average frame rate, and that is, in end of the day, what you want. The screen, super fast. So 165 hertz is a battery killer. I would probably just run 120 with this phone. In fact, that's what I was doing most of the time with this. And then we do eventually have that DC dimming option. It's kind of hidden away because in the dark mode, you can't enable it, at least that is there. Touch response is excellent. The gaming triggers at the top, they're great that we can customize it and it just adds to an extra level of the gaming performance, especially titles like PUBG. You play that a lot, you can get a smooth, constant 90 frames per second, very good loudspeakers, good audio, charging time, even though it's only 30 watts, just under an hour for 5,050 million hours actually isn't too bad. So there we go, that is the full story uh, there about the Red Magic 6S. Thank you so much for watching this video. Do subscribe for more and I hope to see you back in the next up and coming videos.